In this video, you're gonna learn the keys to succeed in business development and sales. And the first thing I'll start off with is that business development and sales is a skill that anybody can learn if you have the right knowledge and methodology. But you have to have the willingness to learn and stretch out of your comfort zone to actually become a better communicator and a better person. And you wanna make sure you watch this video until the end because we're gonna walk you through exactly what business development and sales is. We're gonna give you some real examples in different type of industry so you get a real understanding of how it works in the modern world. And then we're gonna cover the basic skills that you must have if you wanna be successful in these roles. What's going on everybody? My name is Patrick Dang. Welcome to my channel where we're gonna talk all things business development and sales. If you are ready for this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications and let's get started. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta first define what exactly business development and sales is. So the definition of business development that we are gonna use for this video is the process of developing growth opportunities and relationships with other organizations. And typically these are gonna be long-term relationships that are gonna be win-win for both sides. So it's not as if you're trying to close someone on the phone in, in one phone call, right? This is literally long-term deals. It might take weeks, months, or even years before you start building real, profitable relationships. Now, the definition of sales, which is a little different, is going to be transactions where a buyer receives a product or service in exchange for money, right? So this is gonna be a lot more transactional, not necessarily a partnership between two parties, but it's more like, hey, I got this product or service, do you want it? Okay, it's gonna cost this much, and then we trade. So now that you got an understanding of what business development and sales is, let's go ahead and give you some real examples, some tangible examples in the real world, so you get a better understanding of how this works. So the first business development example that we are going to use is a brand called Vertigear and FaZe Clan. All right, so check this out. So Vertigear, if you are into gaming at all or you understand the esports scene, Vertigear is creating these chairs and they're specifically computer gaming chairs or not necessarily computer, but just gaming chairs in general. So basically it's like a high-end chair people can use when they play games, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, on their PC. And it's very marketed as a comfortable chair, uh, gaming chair for gamers. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of different features from high quality um, materials. The seat can go up and down and yeah very ergonomic so you know these chairs are you know in the hundreds of dollars just to buy one chair right and face clan if you don't know who they are they are a gaming organization where they have you know i think dozens or maybe even over 100 different influencers part of their uh, roster and essentially they're like a modern day um influencer company, media company, where they help talent grow their communities online, whether it's on Twitch, uh, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. And then how they make money is obviously because they have so much attention, so much people watching, let's say like game, gamers who are live streaming and making YouTube content because they have a lot of eyeballs, they have a lot of places to do sponsorships. And as you kind of see on their YouTube page, um, you know, they're sponsored by G Fuel, Nissan, Verizon, Beats, SteelSeries. So a lot of big companies are, you know, want to tap into the gaming market to, you know, tap into these new growing fans and, you know, sell their products and services, right? So the collaboration between FaZe Clan and Vertigear, and FaZe Clan does a lot of collaborations with different type of companies, but this specific one that we're gonna talk about. So basically it is a Vertigear chair, right? Vertigear, you can see the branding over here, um, but it's sold on the FaZe Clan website. So essentially, if you're a face clan and you have all this attention, all these people who are looking at everything you do and you have all these influencers who basically can promote any product that you put out, well, if you work together with another company that makes these chairs, you can make a custom chair with custom designs specifically for people who are fans of face clan. So when they go on your website, well, they're into you know gaming chairs and into gaming and they have the money to buy a you know, $4.99 chair. Well, they're gonna buy this chair versus all the other chairs because why? They are a diehard fan of Face Clan. So it's a win-win relationship on both sides because, you know, Face Clan wins because they get to monetize their audience and make money from their viewers. Vertigear wins because, well, they're tapping into this audience that they wouldn't have otherwise reached. And if they do some kind of deal where it's like a revenue split where Face gets a percentage of the sales of the chair, well, it's a win-win on both sides. And obviously to do this type of deal, it takes like probably months or years in the process of making because you have to design the chair specifically for the audience of Face Clan and, you know, to do that process may take a long time uh, to go back and forth. 
and then you have to actually make the chair and then you have to create a marketing campaign and figure out how you're gonna roll it out to all the different influencers on their face clan. And you know, there's a lot of logistics to actually make this happen, but in the end, you know, if it's a successful campaign, both sides should profit. So obviously to do this kind of deal, you're gonna need business development people. One, you know, business development on face clan to, you know, vet the idea to make sure it works for their audience. And you're gonna need a business development person on Vertigear who is the main contact person talking to face clan and seeing how this collaboration is going to work. All right, so now we're gonna get into another business development example and we're gonna move outside of gaming and we're gonna move into tech. So Huawei, which is one of the biggest manufacturers of phone, right? And I'm sure you have heard of them. They make a lot of smartphones. And what they have done is they partnered with Leica and Leica is a high end uh, camera company that makes cameras that are in the thousands of dollars, um, quite expensive. They're, uh, they're more seen as a, like a luxury kind of item. They're handmade and everything like that. So as you can see on the Huawei website, on the, the main phone website, it's Huawei, blah, 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 co-engineered with Leica. So basically Huawei is making these phones and they partner with Leica to make the lenses and the camera technology. So you kind of see when you zoom in on the camera itself, uh, all these Huawei phones have the Leica branding on it. So what's going on here, right? This is basically a business development deal going on where two parties are working together to create a better product for their consumers. So, you know, if you're Huawei, you're making all these phones and you're doing fantastic, you have big market share, right? If you want to compete with the iPhone or Samsung phones, you gotta have really good image quality, whether it's video or photo. And if Huawei doesn't have the capacity or, you know, team and technology to make the best possible picture, well, they can collaborate with somebody who does. So if they wanna get into the camera space, they can work with someone with, like Leica, who's been in business for over 100 years making some of the best cameras out there. And if you're Leica and you wanna move into the mobile space and you wanna make you know, camera lenses for smartphones, but you don't really have the capacity to produce smartphones and you're not a smartphone company, well, it's a perfect opportunity to work with someone like Huawei because they make great smartphones and they have a large customer base so you can start getting your product out there more. So if you're a Huawei, it's gonna be a pretty good situation because you're working with Leica who has 100 years of history and they're known as a premium uh, quality brand that makes great products. And you know, you're gonna basically use their brand name, put it on your phones, and now suddenly people perceive your Huawei phones as something more uh, higher value, right? Because you're using Leica technology. And if you're Leica, well, you're kind of a niche product category where you know it's only for a certain type of people who are willing to spend a lot of money on um, uh, this camera equipment. Well, now your technology that's super good goes with Huawei, right? Now it's more consumer friendly and everybody knows who you are. And if they're more interested in your brand, well, maybe one day they will go back to you and buy your expensive cameras. And for this particular business development deal and what I've you know researched, the teams of Leica and Huawei are working together and they have like a whole engineering team to not only work on the camera lenses, but how those lenses will work with uh, the software and the building artificial intelligence to make um, the image quality better. And you know, all these things that basically they need to do to compete with Samsung and the iPhone, right? So, you if you can't do it by yourself, why not work with another person who has the expertise and work together? And as you can see, there are gonna be business development people on both sides to you know, talk to each other, to figure out how the relationship is gonna work, how much is one party gonna pay the other, is it gonna be revenue split, and you know, how does the branding work, where does the branding go? You know, there's gonna be whole teams of people dedicated to making this happen. So now that you have a couple examples of business development, let's go ahead and give you an example of sales so you kind of see the difference between business development and sales. Now, the sales example I'm gonna use is Frame.io and essentially it is a software where video editors can use it to collaborate, um, annotate each other's videos, be like, hey, you know, you gotta fix this part in the edit and, you know, the editor can see it in their software and be like, okay, I'll fix that, boom, done, right? So it's basically just a post-production workflow for video editors and creative people, right? And I personally use this software myself. So when you go into pricing, what's gonna happen is that you got the free pro team and then we're gonna talk about enterprise, right? So when you're selling frame.io, it's basically a sale. It's not a business development deal, right? So let's say, you know, you're charging $25 uh, per person and you're selling to a company with a hundred um, creative people, right? So $25 times 100 times 12 months, that's gonna be $30,000. So when you're selling something like software and you don't really make changes to the software for one specific customer, it's more like, hey, this is the product. Um, you can decide how many seats you wanna buy and you pay per month and you know that's what you're gonna get and we're not gonna change the product just because you say so, right? And that's 
pretty much a straight sale because if you can just sell that as fast as possible and you make the sales cycle as short as possible, well, you're just kind of, you know, exchanging the subscription or exchanging the software for money, right? So it's like, I have this thing. Do you want it? Cool. Well, this is how much it costs. Do you have the money? Yes. Boom. Give me the money. I give you the product, right? So it's like, that's pretty much, a, it's much more transactional, okay? Now in sales for, let's say something like software, it doesn't mean that you don't listen to customer feedback, right? Because if many people are saying like, hey, you know, we want this feature, then obviously you can put it in your pipeline or roadmap of making the software better. However, it's not necessarily like a business development deal because it's not like two parties working together to create a product like Leica and Huawei, they're working together to create a better phone, right? But when you're selling something like a frame software, right, frame.io, well, you're not really working with another company per se. You're just kind of saying like, hey, we already made it. Do you want to buy it? Boom, done, right? So business development, much more strategic and you know more collaborative and long-term. And frame, when you're selling you know software as, you know, the traditional sales way, it's a lot more transactional. Now, one is not necessarily better than the other. It just depends on what exactly your product or service is and you know how you wanna make your money, right? And in some cases, sales is a lot easier where you just sell the people and then you just close, 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 close. Business development for other people might be better because you just gotta work on a couple deals and then you get a couple of those business development deals going and now you're off to the races. So now you know that we covered you know business development and sales, give you some real world examples of what's going on in the modern world. What are the skills that you actually need to succeed when it comes to business Business development and sales. Now, both actually require the same skill sets, right? even though they're a little slightly different, because really you're just communicating with another person, talking to them, understanding their pains, and, and collaborating together on how you might be able to work together and you know sell your products and services. So obviously, the first key skill you need is prospecting. You need to understand you know who exactly do you want to work with, how can you find them, how can you get in touch with them, whether it's a referral, cold email, cold calling, LinkedIn, whatever the case is, you gotta find a way to generate leads. You're also gonna need you know copywriting skills of you know. If you're writing the emails and things like that, you got to make sure that people read it and respond and book a meeting. And once you book a meeting, you got to have the people skills to, you know, sell your ideas and sell your products and services, right? You got to be able to connect with other people, network with them, understand their pains, pitch your product or service, negotiate, and then actually close the deal. So you need these people skills regardless if you are doing sales or business development. And this is just a must have in business. And the soft skill that most people overlook is empathy, right? If you wanna be successful in this role, you really have to have empathy and understand the emotions of what another person is experiencing because people buy from people they like and people make their decisions based on emotions. So if you really understand what somebody wants in their life, well, it's gonna be a lot more easier for you to pitch your product or service as the solution to you know what they emotionally want. And so with that said, that is going to be sales and business development in a nutshell. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let me know what's the number one takeaway you got from this video. Leave it in the comments. And if you wanna see more business development videos like this, make sure to check out my other videos. And so with that said, my name is Patrick Dang, and I will see you guys in the next one.